hi welcome to drawing with Jesse today we will be working on these sheep again I'm doing a realistic sheep drawing if you have joined in the past um, you're welcome to pick up where you left off um, you are always welcome to draw the same kind of way I'm doing or totally different do your own thing um, and um, I'm gonna grab my sharpener I'll be right back give you guys a chance to uh, find the stream Um, so I'm back. I have my pencil sharpener and so I always like to use this opportunity of coming back to a um, drawing in order to use some fresh eyes and see what bothers me, what I really like, um, and um, so I'm just going to take a second to evaluate here. So, and if this is your first time here, this is a free, open to the public, just sort of draw together time. And it started a whole year ago when I was trying to figure out what it is that I had to offer my, um, my collectors and my followers uh, when it was a pretty stressful time and a lot of people were inside a lot more and um, really looking for some way to uh, relax and express themselves and so I thought um, drawing for me is really relaxing and enjoyable it's a nice way to um, both look out at the world and um, to also look inward a little bit and um, and so I thought I would share that with people that had been um, kind of following my career and sending nice notes all these years and maybe it'd be a way to give back some support and um, so that's how it all came about hi cars <laughs> welcome let me know if you can hear me okay um, and uh, I thought we could have one last day of working on these lovely sheep. Um, so uh, let me know if that sounds good to you also. And for anybody who's just uh, coming for the first time, um, you are welcome to start sketching these guys out or to draw something totally different and just enjoy some fun time together. Um, so next week, let's see, first of all, I'm going to make sure my audio is working since it's hinky sometimes. So, um, if you can hear me, oh, sorry, I'm too choked. if you can hear me, let me know. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. This has turned into a really neat thing for me also. Um, awesome. Thank you, guys. I, um, I didn't know what to expect when I started out, and um, I was just looking through uh, yesterday 
kind of where it started and where it's gone and um and it's it's been kind of an interesting transformation like the first um several months I was doing more of traditional drawing lessons of um of you know here's how to get a shape on your paper and now it's more of relaxing draw together time and also in the past uh, we did some really fast drawings and now a number of our drawings take several weeks and that's a lot of fun too um, so <laughs> it's been interesting and um, and uh, I always love your feedback about you know if you want to try something different um, and so your comments about that or your requests are always appreciated um, I was thinking I got some great photos of my mom's chickens and so I was thinking maybe for next time we could draw some chickens if that sounds fun <laughs> they're really interesting they're white with black spots and um, and um, I don't know I just thought it'd be really fun I had tried to get photos of them a long time ago and it was so overcast at the time um, the lighting wasn't really exciting but I just looked over my most recent photos of them and um, the light is really nice so it's like pretty chickens and good lighting so I think that might be fun so I still kind of like this empty top but I feel like this area over here for me um, needs to be more defined like what exactly is this and um, so I want this to feel like a sheep body um, so the symmetry is really more obvious um, I think uh, There's, I think there's still some distance I could make in the face of the black sheep to, um, uh, I just feel like it could use a little bit more value, a little bit of tweaking, um, maybe change the form of the nose just really slightly. I think this is the point at which just a hairline difference will change the form dramatically. And there's this interesting thing happening in the photo where the um, fur around the nose is dark when it's close and then there's this white halo around it. And since I'm leaving the background blank, I'm kind of missing that extra fuzz. So I'll have to decide what to do right in there. Um, and for any mini, oh, <laughs> Dalmatian chickens. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. That is, it'd be funny if that was what they're really called, but uh, <laughs> it might be. <laughs> I love it. We could definitely call them Dalmatian chickens either way. So... Yeah, so my plan for today is to change up this form a little bit, add a lot more value here, get a little bit more of that sort of curly ringlet texture in the bodies, and then add a lot more value here. And um, so that's it. So let me know if you have plans, if you're working on... Um, on uh, if you're continuing your drawing or if you're starting fresh and uh, if you are starting fresh um, did you find anything with your fresh eyes and uh, let me know what parts you're working on so I'm just gonna clean up this a little bit I think I think I'm having fun with the contrast between the clean area and the messy area and um, I have this sense that the cleaner I am out here the more interesting 
the kind of scribbly marks will feel. Um, just for maybe a little break for the eyes. Um, and and if you've been working on yours for a while and you want to make sure it doesn't get damaged, um, if you have spray fixative, um, that can help um, keep your keep your pencil from smearing your pencil lines. Um, and it's a good idea, especially if you haven't used spray fixative in a while, to test it on a piece of paper because if it all comes out in a blob, it can look yucky. Um, and that's no fun. Um, some people hold their can upside down and spray it for a minute um, to kind of clear it out. Um, and people generally do that when they're when they're putting it away to to make sure it's not quite so blabby when you get it back out. But um, but if it feels like you're you got it out and you're trying to use it and it's kind of blabby, you can try a couple things like that. Um, but make sure it gets done with the blobs before you spray it over your artwork. And if you don't have spray fixative, but you're the type of person that has hairspray, um, we used to use that in art school and it worked just fine, but that can be really blobby. So definitely make sure to test it on something you don't care about first. Some of the same kind of paper so you can see if there's blobs. Some paper shows up with the, the blobs differently for you where there's just like a whole bunch comes out at once. Uh, okay, so cars can add some more contrast to the white sheep. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, oh my gosh, I can see how this is kind of, it can be a two-headed sheep without more body. Yeah, absolutely. Which would be super fun if it was intentional, right? <laughs> we might have to do some mythical creatures someday. Um, and uh, Liz was talking a little while ago about the dragons, and uh, I go, what fun. I, uh... I love doing um, like sort of combination animals, uh, which is how I think about dragons. You know, you're, you're taking basically bat wings and lizard bodies and putting them together, and uh, that's a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, I guess it's a little strange if it's unintentional, though. <laughs> Unless uh, I could, I could see how. Yeah, with this one, if this body wasn't here, <laughs> you could always build the body right behind them and and uh, turn it into that two-headed sheep. Be really funny. Okay, so. This sheep in the photo has kind of this gaze where it's just, both of them aren't really looking at anything and it makes them look like they're just so relaxed. And so I think I'm gonna erase a little bit right into here. There's this shadow that I combined with the pupil and I think if I lighten it up a teeny bit, there will be this soft gaze, or at least that's my plan. And <laughs> oh, so Christ says that uh, she had heard that the cheaper the hairspray, the better it is as a fixative, because uh, they don't put as many weird things in there. Um, yeah. I could see that absolutely and I kind of wonder I, I know a lot of hair products have um, alcohol in them and I wonder how that is on paper if it's 
um, if, if it's archival or not. Okay, so I'm trying to get a nice sharp point on my pinky eraser here, and I'm just going to carve it. Um, okay, so. So, and if you've been here before, you know I, um, I use pointy tools <laughs> in the studio, but I absolutely recommend that, um, you know, use caution, be safe, and, um, you know, stay within your comfort level. And always brace what you're doing so your pointy objects don't go flying. Um, you know, you don't want it to skid through and poke you. Okay. So, there's this wonderful highlight right there. And I do have a white pencil, so I might break that out for, for that spot. And then I'm just trying to lighten this up so, so it feels more like a shadow and less like the pupil continues. Let's see if I can get that soft, soft gaze. I love erasers. <laughs> I love the softness that you can get with an eraser where it just, um, it's nice texture. Okay, so we've got two parts of the eye that we're seeing right here. And this is the part where it's like partly discovery, partly artistic license. still staring straight at me or if I can get him to look just gaze a little bit off <laughs> I just get a staring right at us let's see oh that did it that one little tiny mark right there it moved the gaze forward so fun when that happens and you know some teeny tiny mark changes the expression. I just, I, I think it's very fun. And darken that part just a smidge. And there's this wrapping around of the eyelid. Some people don't do the fixative, but they um, put wax paper, or tracing paper or something, or just another sheet of paper on top of their picture, and then and then they don't like rub it or or just flip the page and draw more. And that'll protect it also. Um, I think where you run into problems is if you're working in a sketchbook and your paper is thin and you draw on the next page and it'll pick up the, um, the pencil from the page below. Um, and uh, I have definitely done that many times. And, you know, usually it doesn't matter, but every once in a while you get something that you really love and uh, you want to protect it. I'm so much happier with this eyeball here. I'm going to show. Oh. It's uh, like all of a sudden the eyeball kind of has a shape. <laughs> uh, it's, it's really fun working on these for um, 
you know, over several weeks, it uh, seems like we're able to uh, to get really far with things. I took a life drawing class with a, um, an artist in the closest uh, city and um, she has a very like, traditional background um, of, of drawing and painting and um, and I was very surprised when I found out we would be working throughout the, um, the whole class on a single drawing. I had never, <laughs> it, I had never had a class, uh, a draw, I've had a lot of drawing classes, but I don't remember ever working on the same drawing for more than one sitting. And it kind of blew my mind. And, um, and uh, I honestly wasn't sure what to think at first. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, that sounds really slow, but um, yeah, I got to develop it in ways that I never had developed a drawing before, just because of um, because of the time that. Um, you know, coming back to it again, you see more, um, you can get more sophisticated, and so, anyways, I think this is really neat uh, that we're able to um, come back to these guys more than once and have time to just kind of relax and learn more about these sheep. this white stripe on this guy's ear. That's really pretty. I wonder if um, if that's a certain kind of sheep that have a white stripe across their ear or if it's some characteristic that's unique to this guy. The weather is really nice, so Otter is out on the deck right outside the studio. <laughs> and, uh, he's, uh, the birds are flying all over the place. It's probably driving them a little nuts. And he's just been barking at everything lately. Like uh, the worst dozers here and gets <laughs> the more otter hears every single thing and has to <laughs> save us from it. Uh, okay. So I'm having fun with how specific this eye is feeling. I'm just gonna really go for that. has a softness to his eye also. Yes. See, their eyes are so interesting. Well, and I know that uh, we had talked about maybe doing some different types of eyeballs. Like cows and chickens and sheep and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. So let me know if you'd like to have a week of that first, and then we can 
spend some time drying some chickens or or something totally different if you've had the urge to draw something specific let me know There's some specific place to put this people to make it feel like this guy's gazing off too. really enjoying the kind of soft rubbed in quality of the eraser marks right now. Making sure my um, I don't accidentally line up the edge of the ear with the edge of the sheep behind. Um, make it easier for people to understand which part is which. I've got my 6B pencil. It's um, darker than the pencil I think I, I used before on the sheet. These, the marks I'm putting down are very light, but they're, they look darker than what's already there. And that's good. I like working from lighter to darker with pencils, drawings. I love this little teeny bit of <laughs> of lip that's that kind of shows right there. That's, I don't know. There's something really sweet about that. And this little pink nose. I like underdrawing lines sometimes, but I, I think this one was pretty harsh. Soften that up a little bit. And
So are you doing the background? I think you said last time that you were doing the background a little bit with um, but I don't remember for sure if I'm if I'm remembering that correctly or not. Um, oh yeah, you're leaving out the air tag. Me too. Um, yeah, me too. It feels like, um, like I'm not sure it adds much, but I think it it could make things more confusing without adding much. Um, to the whole story here. Um, I think I'd put it in if I, if I was painting, since it'd be so diff different in color and it would be obvious what it was. That's sort of the human element. <laughs> that, uh, you know, they're not wild sheep, but, um, Yeah, so then it would really depend on what exactly is the story here. What, what are we trying to say? Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm curious to see how, how it turns out and if you decide to, to do that or not. I think around the muzzle of the black sheep since it's so salt and pepper and here let's see move the nose line a teeny bit Cleaning off my eraser after every mark here. Get this a little, a little fuzz right under the lip, sticking straight out. curious how it would turn out with the white sheep to um, put a darker value in it and then erase some scribbles into it. I might try that. Here. Get this guy's nose in first. See if it seems a little bit more like this guy. Extreme to the next. And then there's a darker area here. Sometimes when the values are up, it makes it hard to really judge where this stuff goes. And 
then cut just so light that it's blending in with the sheet behind it. Okay, I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I think I like it. <laughs> Which is more important. out some little squiggles up here. Uh, there's something really uh, that I just love about the kind of buttery, waxy quality of um, partially erased pencil. <laughs> It's really pretty. You have the sort of clean paper right next to the, up in here right next to this sort of buttery, partially erased paper. Fun materials. And let's see. The more I'm looking at this, I think I really go a long ways with the values, especially on this darker sheep, to um, darken them up. Let's see about this lighter sheep first. Yeah. Um, the texture of the barn, that is pretty. It could almost be its own drawing. Um, kind of reminds me of um, you know, there's some super realist drawers who draw um, I guess I would not <laughs> I want to say really mundane things but not as an insult as um, you know like they're drawing like everyday things that have meaning to people or that you see a lot and uh, like sticky notes or um or pieces of wood envelopes that kind of thing and um but there are a couple artists that i've seen that just do an amazing job with um you know i think super realism it's challenging to um, not just replicate what it is precisely but also to add something and make a statement or something that has some feeling or some meaning and and uh, so it's it's neat when you see people doing that successfully But I could absolutely see somebody doing that with the um, with the wood back there, and <laughs> it just has its own uh, drawing. Although these guys are kind of hiding a big chunk of it. Okay, just gonna see how these squiggles work back here. If it adds texture, if it just makes it strange.
hard edge, but it's also a last and found edge. It's really interesting. <laughs> that line's going every which way. It's pretty funny. Uh, I don't mind that squiggly stuff. I feel like I need a lot more value down here, though. It's, um, you know, for a white sheep, there's a lot of shadow. And uh, those ringlets... They feel such pure white, but then the shadows between them are kind of nice and dark. And so here's a little bit of a turning of the form. use the flat part of my pencil so that uh, so it's filling in kind of solidly instead of making individual lines here since I'm planning to um, erase into it and so kind of limiting the number of different textures I'm doing in this one spot at this one time. It's funny, there must be some slight um, bend in my paper right there. <laughs> I'm ending up with this vertical line. actually like this value much more than the value I already had. I'm going to darken up this guy and then the chin here so it feels a little bit continuous from this side to that side. And uh, it's a little bit complicated by the fact that it goes from the here and the face to the um, like the wool behind the other sheep. But
some pencils you'll notice are a little bit waxier than others so then when you try to go and put other pencils down um, it'll resist you a little bit and uh, so I have a little bit of that happening right here where some pencil I used along the process was just a little bit waxier It's time for me to sharpen, but I really don't want to because I love this flat edge. I'm gonna get as much of the as of this flat value in as I can right now. Before I sharpen it. Yeah, these animals, they are inadvertently seasonal. It's, uh, <laughs> it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know sheep well at all either. I, um, yeah, I know that does are looked like an old man when we brought him home because he already had salt and pepper on his face and I really don't think he was I think you know there can be salt and pepper on on dogs at least when they're not old yet um I mean he was probably middle-aged but he wasn't like an old guy yet and uh yeah but I guess you know that can happen with people too where you have salt and pepper uh, you know, and, and uh, people that aren't really that old yet. Um, it sure is lovely. Yeah. I was kind of wondering about this stripe. This otter has, um, he's, uh, he's got the red for like a golden retriever. Um, and then he's got the white stripe down the nose. And I've seen so many dogs and horses with that white stripe and I always wonder what the purpose is. There must be some purpose or they wouldn't it wouldn't be on so many animals. Yeah. If it didn't do them some good. I guess it's possible that <laughs> dogs that people just thought it was pretty and kept breeding for it but I don't know I just have the feeling there's more to it than that but um but I, I was kind of wondering about this stripe of it's that sort of thing where it's uh, common or if it's unique to this guy But yeah, the chickens, that would be, <laughs> they're also not spring chickens, but it, it feels like chickens are kind of a spring animal somehow. Maybe we can be ironic here and have spring animals, but have them all be, uh, you know, full grown. <laughs> So this guy has this nice, there's this shadow over here and then this nice little shoulder 
feet here. trying to decide how much form and it looks like these super skinny right now but I have every intention to just cover up that bottom strip <laughs> um, so so that'll take away that strange effect of um, super skinny shape I guess I could just uh, take it down a little ways why not another really fun thing about working in paper or loose canvas is you can crop in as much as you want after the fact and uh, get a mat for it oops or uh, or just cut out a piece of paper cut cut a hole in it that's you know the size you want and uh, Kind of frame your drawing in. Okay. And I've been working on um, loose canvas a lot lately, and. Uh, it uh, it has more work, but feels like it's worth it for um, you know just all the options. Just like just like paper. Okay, it's time. <laughs> My pencil has gotten as short as can be. can tell this pencil is going to um, be pretty short pretty soon. <laughs> it's getting a lot of use. So I just took off the wood I'm leaving <laughs> all the pencil behind and uh, hopefully that way I've preserved my flat edge here. Okay, let me get some of this back sheep in so it's not super skinny. There's just something about when the value is getting into a better range. Uh, just, oh, yep, that's closer. That's so much closer. I like that. So it, trying to get that 
consistency of the white sheet behind and then Curly cues. There we go. And okay see how big that neck is compared to some other things. All right. All right. So, dun, 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 yeah. So, let's see. Just was feeling way too skinny. It really is way too skinny. So I'm gonna bring that down. bit of a sanity check here and get some of these angles go. My sheep. Give me a little closer. funny that had been kind of nagging at me, but I hadn't really put my finger on exactly what the issue was until just now. But, uh, but my drawing was somewhat off for this guy. Um, I think, let's see. I need to bring it forward even more. Maybe. Maybe not. Let's see. I'm going to look at this for a few minutes before pushing it any further. Okay, so. I <laughs> love this the wild fur on this guy's face is so pretty. Just, just the variety of the straight hair and The um, let's see, you know, the straight hair, the white hair, the black hair, this kind of grayish stuff right in here. And uh, and then the really curly hair kind of halfway down. So I've moved this, I've got two strong lines right next to each other. I'm going to take 
care of that. Just, I'm using this as kind of a blending stick at this point. I'm just trying to push my pencil around a little bit. says after the adult chickens maybe we can do some elderly rabbits I love that yeah oh my gosh <laughs> I love that absolutely I'm gonna write that down <laughs> um. oh that makes me really happy I love that we have so many rabbits outside right now all of them look um, not old, <laughs> but they're wild. I'm not sure how old they get to get and still like live in places where they're easy to see. Uh, so we might have to find photos of somebody's pet rabbits or something. But that, that just sounds so fun. <laughs> I'm not even sure what an elderly rabbit would look like, you know, if it just turns gray or if there's something else that, um, you know, if they thin out or, I'm super curious now. So how are you feeling on your sheep drawing? I, I like this kind of um, um, erratic texture of the dirty eraser on the um, over the light value on the white sheep. I think that was worth the effort there. It's funny, it's such a delayed gratification with that. With them. Or at least it was the way I did it. But uh, I like it. I'm to clean off my eraser a little bit so I can actually lighten some areas up here. this much lighter area along the edge right here that I think is that's interesting because this is the part where it goes from the black sheep being in front to the white sheep being in front right here and I kind of wonder if that
so well yeah these guys you know it's, it's interesting I'm I'm interested to see the photo I took before I started today compared to where it is here so it's easy to wonder especially with slower drawings like did this progress you know how did it how did it go along and you know it feels good um, but you know was was there really much progress or not it's fun to see the photo and well yeah this changed and that changed and you know it's uh, um, was it some people say something like um, the last 10% it takes it takes thirty percent of the time or something like that, uh, but uh, you know it can really feel like um, slow work, but also like important work. And Okay, so I'm gonna soften this part up and just see if that helps it I feel like it's part of that body. I'm just using this like a pencil at this point, <laughs> like a marker a little bit. It's uh, a nice dirty eraser can do a lot. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. This one almost started feeling more like a charcoal drawing to me. And how it's kind of pushed in to the paper. I'm just going to put a few lines on top for um, just uh, some of that nice layering of the soft rubbed in pencil and then a little bit of the just lines. And I don't want to cover up everything, but just um, bring back some of the, the 
fun of a pencil. I'm doing <laughs> my lines are going kind of backwards from how I almost always do them. I just feel like left-handed lines here. <laughs> yeah, slipping, slipping off to the right. Um, okay, let's get his moustache. bit of his beard. And a little bit more of an upright feeling here. And <laughs> All the woolly ringlets feel a little like drawing a bow to your ears. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, that is hilarious. <laughs> Maybe we should do that sometime. <laughs> oh, yeah, it'd be interesting to compare like, um, like a close up of this to a, a close up of a drawing of a bowl of Cheerios. <laughs> <laughs> See if we handle it the same way. That would be really interesting. Uh, well, I am going to um, call it a day since it's after three. And um, thank you for joining me. It has been lovely drawing with you. And um, I will be back next Thursday, of course with some elderly chickens or middle-aged chickens <laughs> and then elderly rabbit after that um, and um, I hope you have a wonderful week um, oh thanks for the like and um, yeah so I will um, let's see <laughs> I'll see you in a week and um, have a wonderful time. I hope you get to enjoy the spring a little bit. Yay! <laughs> uh, awesome.